Yes, I can see yes. you. Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you all are doing well. I am Sakshi Priya, HR Manager at AirQ's Aviation Private Limited Company. Welcome you all in today's webinar. Today's webinar topic is today's webinar topic is Prism with CSR initiatives in the new normal. And the host of today's speaker is Ms. Shruti Bossi Arora. So we, we heartily welcome you, ma'am. Thank you. So, Thank you. Uh, so before starting this uh, webinar, I just want to give, to give a brief introduction about ma'am. So uh, there are too many to say about you, ma'am. But due to, due to time constant, I have uh, mentioned few more. So uh, Ms. Shruti Arora was the first CEO of Aviation Travels in 2002. She has, she has debuted her as a directorial entrepreneur into the business world at the age of 31. Ma'am has worked with some of the most brilliant airline personnel, and currently she is working for currently she is working with kids on health and fitness. Man has also nominated by managing trustee by Allied Tourism Corporation in the year 2000. So now over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Sakshi. Uh, just to add on that, I'm basically an entrepreneur now and uh, whatever I'm talking on the uh, triumph of the CSR initiatives uh, basically is uh, you know something that I personally do and what I foresee for ourselves as an organization because we have JANA consultants and we have uh, JVS General Trading which is a part of the JANA group and we have Walker Head Sports Services so I'm totally shifted my verticals and not in the airline business anymore but yes uh, management and initiatives and I think entrepreneurship goes all across all verticals yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my presentation uh, and I hope you can all hear me. I uh, will take uh, questions uh, probably, uh, you know, at uh, the end of the session. Okay, I'm uh, talking about a brief uh, into the CSR or the social corporate responsibility as we all know it. Um, it's the buzz around now in all organizations. Uh, CSR at one time was considered, you know, like bottom line activity until the 1980s when stakeholders theory by Freeman came into play, which stated that a firm does not operate in isolation. It has impact on various stakeholders. So what the firm does impacts not just its profits, but its people. If we take employee welfare as an example, stakeholders believe in the past that it impacted their bottom line or their profit margin. But with the current stakeholder theory, it shows that care for employees could generate more revenue for customers, help save cost with suppliers, and a good CSR for employees help when they are motivated. Today, most companies want to show responsibility and do things that are impactful, but do they always get it right? And why? Simply because they have not explored what's a good fit program for their own organizations. People tend to follow a thumb rule on, you know, copycat way of life and do things just because somebody else is doing it, but to stay ahead of the game, you have to stand out, not blend in. That's what I would say, my policy, yeah? So how could we adopt to the new uh, verticals? I think I skipped a slide, yeah. Okay, uh, we have four R's that we'd like to use. So that would be to reinvent, be resilient, re resonate, and to restore. So this really needs a top management decision, which is essential in finding the right teams to launch a good CSR program. And they need to adopt this based on the need of the R with concrete targets to present to the stakeholders. CSR is increasingly important to all organizations, not just the big ones, but SMEs like us can also participate. 
I guess we all know that many companies around the world have integrated the new, uh, the near genius concept of being good while doing well into their DNA. But does this resonate? What would be a good fit to follow in the new normal? Now we are all going through this current new normal. So the current pandemic, environmental and civic crisis have shifted the way companies are looking at their corporate social impact and strategies and are forcing them to adopt to the new normal. The new normal is within reach, like I would say, as CSR and social impact leaders, we can use this time to get even closer to our goals. So we don't really need to see the new normal as a setback, but some of us have used this time to actually leverage and you know go ahead with doing things differently. So how can we adopt to the new normal? In the new normal, CSR is a top priority for business, no longer just a PR agenda alone. The field of CSR is driving the internal changes within companies that are needed to evolve the business landscape to a system that includes all stakeholders. To make that shift, CSR needs to be fully woven into a company's overall strategy. The most important insight this far, that is for 2020, would be for companies to determine the new normal for CSR by use, utilizing their core business in ways that will help society as a whole through this crisis and look into their internal stakeholders, their employees' wel welfare program. This is very close to my heart because I'm a major in HRM, so I always look at employees. Look at the executive support for long-term funding. For example, Amazon committed their quarter two profits to COVID response while expanding their size and responsibility of Amazon in the community teams. Integrate CSR management into key operations so that it's easier to monitor and measure the impact of your work, just like companies measure and report on profit driving initiatives, they could also do this for CSR build partnerships across sections of your company. So kind of now, because all of us are doing remote work and we are not really in touch with each other on the same platform, I think it's a good idea to initiate something that would drive across the sec sector or the spectrum of an organization. Turn the spotlight on internally, that's what I was just saying. Ensure di diverse representation on executive leadership teams and company boards, taking responsibility for maintaining an inducive culture and hiring and paying people equally would be the need of the hour. So I'm coming into the real issue here, which is the coronavirus, um, which has given companies an opportunity to use the four hours, hours that is of the resilience to reinvent, to resonate and to restore and be well prepared to manage risks and adapt to the new circumstances. We have all been faced with unprecedented tensions and we are obviously questioning ourselves about the purpose and how to operate. This is important, not only so we can thrive today, but so as to prepare and ourselves and anticipate the future challenges and the change that has happened globally. Personally, I would like to focus on the internal stakeholders, that's the employees, simply because they have had to deal with so many changes in the recent past and they've had to adopt to uh, and adapt to remote working, uh, pay cuts and uh, working additional hours as well. So it's not as hunky-dory as it seems that you know, you're working you know, remote, you're at home and it's so fantastic, but no, it's very taxing because uh, there's a lot of distraction, there's a lot of things that's happening. So I think we have to appreciate the fact when people actually do a good job, despite the fact that they are working from home. There are a few strategies that can be adapted within the organization during these challenging times 
to reinvent the wheel and stay focused on what matters most to people. And those people would first be internal and then external with our customers and clients, because if our internal people are not going to be satisfied and happy, then you know the projection outside is not going to be great. So I'm done with the part of this presentation and I'd like to take questions from here. Thank you so much. Uh, anyone, any questions? I'm looking at my chat as well. So if there are any questions, you can type it in. I guess no one has questions. Actually, so any questions? Okay, so so I would like to express my gratitude and thank you for to you, ma'am. It thank was you. it was a very wonderful session, and I am sure that everyone has gained some insights from this productive webinar. Thank you again for sharing your experience and for giving your valuable time to us. Thank you on the behalf of whole ARQ's Aviation Private Limited Company. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure being here. And thank you to the Captain Shaker as well for inviting me. It's been uh, very interesting. And though it was short, I think it was to the point and I hope it adds value to somebody who's listening in. Thank you so much. It was beautiful. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, thank you, ma'am. Thank you.